Alrighty, in today's video, we're going to be counting and filtering database entries using Notion Formulas 2.0. Previously, in Notion Formulas 1.0, you had to do many workarounds to count the number of database entries that are related to another database entry. We're going to be going over the filter and length formulas. So as you can see, I've created a task and project database. They're related to each other, and I've added three basic properties to illustrate some examples today. Off the bat, if we want to count the number of related tasks in the project, we could use the map function, printing the relation, comma, current, dot notation, name. And as you can see, if you just leave it as the map, it'll have those names and nothing else, right? But because we want to count quantity of tasks, what we can do is another dot notation, where we do dot length, open and close. As you can see, we have a numerical number representing the number of tasks that are associated with the project. So if I remove that, you'll see the name. If I add the length, we can get that. So let's go a little further with this and count tasks based on specified criteria. So we can go ahead and do that by using the filter formula. And the filter formula works similar to a map function. It's just structured a little different. But within a filter context, you can specify other database properties and use that as a way to count the number that exists for that specified criteria. Again, we're going to start with tasks as that relation with projects. And then we're going to do the dot notation filter. If you haven't watched some of my other videos, I highly recommend watching some of those uh, where I'll go into some of these formulas into detail. Because today is a three minute formula episode, I want to concise, organized, and short. Once we have the filter, we can do current. Again, it's the dot notation moment where because we added that dot, we can choose which properties that we want to reference by. In this case, we'll start with the status for understanding when something hasn't been started. Now that we have the filter, we can do when the status is not is equal to not started, it'll show the tasks that have not been started, right? So all three tasks have not been started. And again, the value of the length formula, extremely valuable here, right? We can do dot length. And now we have three tasks that have not been started. So in this case, if we were to switch this up, say explanation point equals, which says not equal to. So as long as it's not started, we want to count it because all three of these tasks are not started. It's counting zero, right? Do equals, it goes back to three. That was pretty simple, right? We just added that filter and said, how many tasks have not been started? So let's go a little further and let's use this checkbox property. We could use it for whatever we want, but in our case, we're going to just use it as a way to filter out our tasks that are related to the project. Similar to what we have here with the filter, we're going to basically do something very similar. Start with the tasks dot filter, and because a checkbox can be empty or not empty, we need to specify the criteria in which we want to see if a checkbox is filled or not filled. And so, in our case, maybe let's count the ones that are empty. So we're going to start with empty current, and we're going to reference that checkbox. Close that up, and now it tells us that just task two and three have that checkbox empty. So if I click on this. That will pop up. Click on all three of these, nothing will show. Very responsive, very helpful there. I think the last formula that I want to sort of filter by is if a number is bigger than or smaller than a certain number that you specify. We create a new formula and reference the tasks filter. We got to use current again, and this time we want to reference the number. First few steps of these formulas are very intuitive and straightforward. It is the criteria that you specify after you have the syntax ready to go in which we want to sort of count the number of entries that match that criteria. So in this case, why don't we do it so if it's greater than 50, we want it to filter. So in this case, they're all empty. I just added some arbitrary numbers there. And as you can see, task three is the only database entry that has a number greater than 50, right? As you can see, the ability to count based on a filtered criteria is immensely helpful. And in all three of these examples, we can just add that dot length. And instead of showing the actual output of the task, we can see the number of entries that match that criteria. If we review those formulas that we went over. We have filter criteria for all of the entries that have a number greater than 50. Notice if I just changed it, it goes to two. Unchecked, if I check all of them, it goes to zero. And not started, right? If I do done, we get down to two and all, meaning these are going to be all the tasks that are associated with this project. Hopefully you found value in this short three-minute formula episode. Again, the counting and filtering ability is immensely easier now with this link function as well as the filter function. You can use these numbers to create outputs and so on and so forth, which you were never able to do you know, just a few weeks ago. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I kept this one a little shorter than the rest. 